Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dirty Modo. And it's amazing because it's March Madness. It's short track racing at Richmond. Uh, we have the normal four. We'll call them degenerates. Travis is slowly sneaking over the fence. After this amazing run on three, three point, what is it? Three point over under. I forgot something. Pro. Oh, what do you got? A little uh, Shinerbach this week. Oh, Ooh. boy. All right, I'm going to. All right, let's, 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 before we move forward, let's talk about the tourney. Never in my life. You got your normal cast of characters here. We got Trav. looks like the home studio. We got Tim's, yep. who's still displaced. Is that the uh, DBC? Are you yep, a DBC? Door yep, Door Bumper Clear Studio. And we got the professor in the wizard laboratory back there. Um, let's talk the first week of the tournament. Before we get into races and everything. Uh, I've never seen a more player prop degenerate than Travis on over under three pointers. It's become it's become a little uncomfortable even for me. They've been hitting though, like literally that's where I've like made my money this past week. What what do you want me to do? I, I listen, share them earlier in the day. That's what you want you to do. We had a great run. What was when did our real when did a run happen? When did our big run happen, Tim's? Was that our Friday run or Saturday? I can't remember. Friday, Saturday, yeah. <laughs> Got on a heater Friday, Saturday. Yeah. It got a little, it, it got a little ridiculous. Can it you did. quickly? Uh, we'll we'll have our bets later in the episode. But can you quickly tell us how the? Uh, didn't you have an over under game go? Well, okay, so here we go, real quick. I wake up Saturday. I don't have a lot of. Uh, wait, well, was Saturday, right, Tim? I think yeah. it was Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I wake yeah. up Saturday. I'm like, I'm a little study, and I don't know what. I said, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw a little, little something out there. So I did a three game parlay, taking all the dogs, and I do a three game parlay with two overs and an under. Uh, I lose the dog parlay on game two. I win the first two legs of the over-under parlay. What's left is an under bet, okay? The under bet, I don't want to hedge it off, so I'm like, all right, I'm just going to see how it goes. I get playing around the house, don't really pay attention. I pop up at halftime, and I'm like, ooh, I'm kind of right on the number. So if they score, follow me, listeners, if they score 77 points or more in the second half, I lose the parlay. The halftime line was surprisingly 76.0, not even .5. So I take the over 76 for half of what I would have won on the parlay, and I'm basically like, boom, it's a winner. You know, we talk about this, right, Tims? Hedge it yeah. off. Take mm -hmm. the money. I don't even watch the game. I get messing around, messing around, messing around. I'm like, man, what happened? I look. The second half lands at 76.0. So not only do I win the parlay, but it's a push on my hedge bet. It was the center of all centers. Mm. Unbelievable. It, it was a good run. It was a good run. I was on a heater. Even Tim's was – Tim's one point, I said, he goes, what are we on in the next game? I said, I'm on – who was it? I'm on this one. He goes, I was the other side, but I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with a heater. I'm jumping ship. I'm going yeah. with Steve's. I'm just tailing Stevie's on a heater. Yeah, I was tailing your totals. Your totals were on point all weekend. I was tailing them. They were what was the makers. game? Oh, that's where it started. Hold on. Let's start, the, let's start with that one. I've got it. Uh – Tennessee. I was in, so hold on, let me set the stage. I'm in South Park Mall on, I'm on a mall here in Charlotte, walking around with my bride. Why are we down there? Oh, my daughter has an appointment, so we drive her down there, and we're walking around the mall, and I'm texting these two going, I'm sitting at the mall having a coffee on championship or NCAA weekend. What am I doing? And then I sent this text. Go ahead, Trav. You had at one point, you had the over uh, 142 and a half, the over at 143 and a half, and you had the under at 145 and a half, 146 and a half. 147 and a half, 148 and a half. I believe it came in at 146. <laughs> so you basically it middled it somehow. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that's when the fuel of the rocket was lit and the degeneracy just continued. I went home, I cracked a cold one, and I started firing like it was like it was free ammunition. Russ, you'll be glad to know we decided after the show on Thursday we were going to start a separate one so that we weren't going to just kill your phone while you were actually working this past weekend. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Some people have to work. I know, man. You got to get a better agent, Professor. <laughs> I do. Well, listen, it wasn't just a big uh, racing weekend. Tim's how the race or big basketball weekend. Tim's how the race go? We did good. We did good. I mean, we didn't get a race winner, so the streak of three at, ends at three. But uh, we had the Bowman top ten. We had the Busher top ten, and we even had Chastain Almondinger that parlay top ten that hit. So, and a lot of fans tailed it. So. I think the only one that we missed was the uh, drivers to lead a lap, and we yes, came so that. close. That was, <laughs> I feel like, though, as a podcast, 
last week might have been one of our best weeks. We were on and around every correct bet. Yeah. And and the drivers to lead a lap, really what got us there was the alternate strategy by Bell because he kind of gobbled up. We were expecting a wave. So so the bet was over under eight and a half drivers to lead. Yeah. And we had seven. Yeah. And what we happened was is in the green flag cycles, uh, the 20 car ran out the first stage. And he was on an alternate two-stop strategy, which basically meant he led multiple times where we were expecting multiple drivers uh, hey, you can't be right all the time. If we were right all the time, we wouldn't work. Let's but, just be honest. Uh, fans that were right, Richard Jenkins, uh, FanDuel, I didn't see this. That was a Clint Boyer's pick. Tyler Reddick to finish top five, and Ross Chastain and Alex Bowman each to uh, finish top ten. He cashed that. Uh, Jeremy, a double clutch. He had Byron to win. He also had Byron top three. He also did the Dinger Chastain top ten parlay. That cashed. Uh, Nero had... Uh, Took Chevy top manufacturer. He had a Busher top ten. I mean, our fans all cashed in this uh, past weekend. Andy Blau had Almondinger versus Ross Chastain, Bowman versus Cindric. Um, so yeah, really good uh, weekend for everybody. I got this one guy that basically is yelling at me. He says another week of posting my winnings until I get a shout out. You guys have me up over seven hundred on the year. And when he says 700, I want to let you know that the ones he sends are $10 and $5 bets. So it's not like he's wagering a substantial amount of money. Uh, Dan, I'm going to go with Christensen. Hopefully that's pronounced correctly. No telling if I'm right or wrong. Um, but Dan, hey, man, I love it. To this week, he had the Ross head-to-head, the Bowman head-to-head, Bowman group, and a Parker Kligerman, which we didn't discuss. Ooh. Parker Kligerman top five. So good for him. All right, well, so we've set the stage Professor, if you can't get it right at Richmond, you can't get it right. Well, we got it right at, at Coda, so I was pretty happy with that. So this week, I, I think we're I, – I still like what we got this week. So we got Truex, Hamlin, Blaney, Byron, Larson, Bell, all real close there in that top tier. I, know I love that. Let's set the stage. Uh, new tires, tires they ran at Phoenix. Supposed to wear more. We aren't expecting a Bristol situation. Uh, but I, then again, I wasn't expecting a Bristol situation going to Bristol. I don't but think that will happen at Richmond. Track. But what's that? This is a high wear track to begin with. Yeah, so you could burn your stuff off. They pit before they need fuel. Uh, tires are definitely the issue. Uh, so once again, we have Toyota Heavy, Truex, Hamlin, and Bell all in the top tier. Out of the Ford camp, Blaney's by himself. And we had a couple Hendrick drivers in Byron and Larson. I'm putting them in no particular order because looking at the numbers, that's, that's almost just a blanket over them all. Correct. Yep. The the second tier, I, I could. There's some guys in here that have have really screwed us this year, but um, Logano, Chastain, Elliott, Busher, Kozlowski, Reddick, Chase Briscoe, Bubba Wallace, right on the edge there. So Ch- Chase Elliott's really has has screwed us this year. I'll be honest with you. And then Logano has been a little little hit or miss. He he's struggling. So. But, but their numbers here are pretty good, so I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what else to do. I got two names you haven't mentioned yet that I really want to focus on, but I don't want to <laughs> dominate this. So, Tim's, is there anybody in Tier 1, Tier 2 that you think we need to digest into? you have any major questions? I, I, I was curious about Logano. I mean, he's kind of – he's 22-1 to 1 right now to win. He struggled, but he's, he's really good at Richmond. Yep. So, I'm not sure what to do with this year versus track history at Richmond. Well, I will tell you this, Tim's, in my opinion, as a gambler, he is barely outside tier one. And at 22 to one, he's the 14th longest odds. So the reason I say that is when you talk value, like, uh, you know, he's not my favorite to win, but 22 to one. Rarely do I find a 22 to one driver that I can visualize winning the race. It's been a long time since Joey Logano's won a race that's not been a, a speedway style race. I believe he's not done winning in his career. I think there's a breakthrough coming. I just don't know when. 22 to 1 professor can you get can you get around that his numbers at richmond are just really good so I, I i you know that's that's the problem you have i think his number here here's basically penske signature they are short run cars has been their history uh so let's talk about richmond in general not a lot of yellows there a lot of green flag racing there's gonna be a lot of conversations about strategy two things make richmond work one the tires slow down so much you could come to pit road get new tires and even though you lost time you make it back up on the racetrack as you go so fast 
The second interesting thing is because you pit off turn three and you exit pit road basically off turn two, you lose relative to the leader almost the least amount of time of any racetrack. You know, you only lose like you don't lose as much time as you think because while you're on pit road for 42 ish seconds, you run damn damn near a whole lap and the lap times in the mid 20 second range. So so it's like a I don't know, like a 28 or 30 second overall loss to the leader. You only lose like a lap and a quarter. So what do we think about then Logano top 10? Because you're getting even money with that. You know, the problem is, is Logano's either good or awful. I'd take, I'd take the top 10 over a win for sure. Yeah. If he's, if he qualifies well though, this is, that number's gone, which is kind of at this point of the year, I'm kind of hesitant to take it early because it, like you said, Steve, he could be terrible and that has no shot of even hitting, but yeah. I like when you talk about long shot winners, I think, you know, I hate to say, but Logano being a long shot, I think 22 to one Logano is, is the better long shot. Um, I have one. Oh, okay. Uh, what about his teammate? Brian Blaney is, uh, you have him third on the predictor. He is uh, 11th, according to Vegas, 15. He's the miss in the book. Of all the book, comparing the predictor versus the book, he's the miss. Uh, 15 to 1 to win, 4 to 1 top 3, almost 2 to 1 top 5. And I think, you know, Blaney's numbers there are too good to ignore. I think he's one of the misses in the book. So his his numbers specifically at Richmond aren't outstanding, but all the other tracks we compare him to, they are. Who won Phoenix? Let's talk about Phoenix. Same tire as Phoenix. Yep, Bell won Phoenix. Correct. So give me the top five, though. Bell was outstanding, and he's the favorite at Richmond. So at Phoenix, we had Bell, Busher, Gibbs, Keselowski, Blaney. So there you have it. Blaney was good. Keselowski was up there. And Blaney's um, been consistent this whole year. He's, what, third in points? Yeah, he, he's, just been, he's just been consistent, you know, this year and the end of last year. Uh, you know, so here's the thing. There's So Professor has a little more Blaney Logano love than the books. The books have a little more Ty Gibbs love than the professor. So that's the books yeah. protecting the hot hand of Gibbs. Yeah, but I, so where Gibbs comes into, where we struggle with Gibbs is his lack of history, right? So like I look more at Richmond, he's finished ninth. That's his best finish. He's was 15th and 36th in the other two, right? Do you think, do you think about boosting him up because he's in a Gibbs car though. Can you take that into account? Yeah, I, that is taken into account, but you also have to look at like his short track and, and like performance. He has that, that great finish at, at Phoenix, but that's, that's about it recently. I think Gibbs is really hard. So Gibbs is trying to, here's Gibbs. Gibbs is trying to buy a stock before people write about it. I mean, that's really it, right? You're trying to get NVIDIA before people say it's already up, right? I mean, that's where, the books are protecting against Gibbs because he is a hot hand. Like, I agree with a professor who can only use data. What doesn't go in here is there's not a momentum or a swinging up score. Or, and I think Ty Gibbs is so young and learning so much that it's hard to predict. I expect Gibbs to outrun his predicted number of 15th, you know. So, so we do have that, that momentum and swinging up factor in there, but it's just his other numbers at these tracks just it, it equals out. So Right. I guess you have momentum for what we consider a standard guy. What, what the way this is designed is we have momentum for what I would call an established driver. I think Gibbs is establishing himself. So he, he kind of I, – I can see both sides of this argument, right? Because he could go there and, and all of a sudden go back to 2023 Ty Gibbs. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's why I ran 15th. Or he can run third and be like, man, this kid is on the scene. So, so, so the argument pays is true just for the guy right below him, which I know you're mad about. Oh, like I have a road down. He's top of my list. Boom. So Kyle Bush has six wins there, right? So, yeah, three? so he should definitely be a tier four or three or wherever the hell you have him. Okay, but now look at what he's done recently. Like it's the same thing as with Gibbs. Like we've we've just flip flopped. So I got one question though. Let's talk about this. Why we're here? Because follow me now. I think the sleeper bet of the week is Austin Dillon top ten. 
Austin Dillon's numbers at Richmond are an outlier if you look at his career averages versus track. So if you follow me, Tim's step back, create a scatter plot of career numbers and put it over the series, right? So you take, hey, you, your career average is an X finish and you, know, da, 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 and you look at the outliers. Richmond is an outlier for Austin Dillon. He runs better at Richmond statistically than his career averages through the series. That's one of his best racetracks. Correct. Fair, Professor? Totally. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the, how he grew up, whether it's the trail breaking. You know, so I want to bring that up because now Kyle Busch is there. So if RCR can provide the equipment, I think they have two drivers that can drive. One we know can win. He's won there six times. But, you know, and I'm not saying Austin Dillon to win at 100 to 1. I think that would be a shocker. But yeah. 380 for a top 10 wouldn't shock me. I don't mind 380 at top 10. I think the only way this week top 10s really work is you take that shot on a guy that could sneak in that's, you know, like a Barry, like a Priest, like an Austin Dillon that just a good short track racer. They, their, their driving style performs well at these type of tracks. Well, because the problem you have is if this baby goes green like it has in the past, your top 10 is going to be Bell, Hamlin, Truex, Gibbs, Larson, Busher, Byron, Kozlowski, Kyle, Reddick, Blaney, like – you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't mean to be a jerk, but it's 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 gonna the favorites are gonna hammer the front. Mm -hmm. This is not a track. Let's flip the other conversation that we have a lot. This is not a track that I see anyone in the bottom fifteen guys getting in there. Burton, Hemrick, Gralla, Haley, Smith, Gilliland, Ty Dillon, Stenhouse, Lejoy, Sindrick's numbers are awful there. Nemechek, Hosevar, nope. Jones, I'd have to ask. McDowell, like they just, this is not a track, right, right, Professor? Like this is a, I don't know why. Actually, I do know why it is. I shouldn't say I don't know why. This is my job. I know why. Like Richmond is, <laughs> man, you need it all, man. It's fast enough. You got to have downforce. Um, it's, it's, it's a short track. You, I mean, it, it kind of takes a little bit of everything to do it. Um, and, and to be honest, that's why the big teams are good here. This How many pit a, stops uh, will we see? This you should week. see like seven. So yeah, but you're going to have three or four under green. Like that's what our average is. We have three. Here's or four what you're going to have. You're going to have probably no green. green flag stops on the first stage for anybody running up front. You'll stop once at the end of stage one. You're going to stop twice under green in stage two. You're going to stop at the end of stage two. You're going to stop twice under green in stage three. So you're looking at six if there's not a single yellow. So you're looking at six to eight, probably seven, I'd say seven or eight pit stops. Russ, does that go into the model like? Yeah, pit you, crews I, into it. I like the predictor. Listen, before the predictor, I like Truex, Hamlin, Blaney, Byron, Larson, Bell. I mean, I think that's it. Look, Bell won Phoenix. He's on a hot streak. Um, Truex, I think this is a little, this still has a little bit of veteran flair. Remember, you know, the Bristol fall off that was substantial, and we saw Truex and Denny up front. So, so take what you saw at Bristol, and this is not as dramatic, but it's the same skill set. When they drop the green at Richmond, they are not 100%. And you got to drive those, those eggshells, man. So that's why I like more than Phoenix, I'll add. So, so I'm taking a little seniority at Richmond. So for that reason, I think Truex and Hamlin – are my favorites. I have a sleeper at Brad Kozlowski. I thought he could have won there in the fall, and he screwed up coming to pit road, almost pissed his, missed his pit box, and Busher won the race. So I just think I like Truex, Hamlin, and Kozlowski, those three to run really, really well. Unfortunately, so don't the books. Even Kozlowski's at 13 to 1, right? The guy hasn't won a race in a couple seasons, and he's top 10 in favorites, right? So basically, once again, if you're listening to this, the professor has screwed you and given all the data to the books, so there's no value for us. He's basically sold himself to the dark side. Got to eat. Kids got to eat, man. <laughs> Kids got to eat. <laughs> Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to the over-unders to which team will cut down the nets, all on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. We've got some basketball bets coming up, so be sure to stick around to hear them. Take the court with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. 
Visit FanDuel.com slash dough to get started. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 and over and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Uh, I think we should go right to matchups. I, just, I mean, is there anything else we need to talk about? There's no top 10 bets I like other than Dylan. Is there another one I'm missing, Professor? Let me give you the guys I would bet. Logano at even money. Can we agree that has a value? Yes, yeah. Okay. We have Bubba at plus 160. Professor? No. I, I would go with – I'd go with a McDowell before I do him. Briscoe, 320. Barry, 320. Gregson, 340. I'm going to ask Barry just because he's a short track racer. The fans are going to want to ask that question. So he ran really well there in a Hendrick car, but this is not a Hendrick car. So, Amen. We can move along. Hold on, though. What about the uh, our top ten parlays that we've got? Well, hold on. I haven't got – well, okay, we can get there. I was seeing if – how about Eric Jones? He strikes me as a short track racer, but you're going to tell me his numbers there say no. Nope. So I think the only top 10 bets that I can get my mind around right now is Logano at even money and Logano and Austin Dillon at plus 380. Okay. Real quick before we leave here, is Bowman still dead to you or did his comeback at Austin help you? Yeah, and he's won here before too. So That's why I asked. That was a preloaded question. (laughs) I wouldn't say he's dead to me. Like this, he's on a great streak for, for himself. So... Um, what the hell did you just say? Speak. Use English. Tell the tell the listeners that using English. Okay. Well, he's finished top fourth in the last two races. He's won here. Um, he finished eighth in this race last year. I, he's not dead to me just yet. So here's here's he's dead to me because he's like a plus one twenty. Tim's. I think mm-hmm. he needs to be like a one eighty to two twenty to get it. I I I don't. I would rather have Logano at even money than Bowman at 120. Is that fair? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I, I think he's had good runs recently, but I don't know. I need to see I need to see a little bit more to, for, to bet 120, like you said. Tim's, now, 55 to 1 to win the race, he could definitely stick it right in your wallet. Yeah. Let me ask 100%. you this, though, Tim's. If you're sitting on a FanDuel 50% boost or something, though, now are you firing it? Yeah. If you could bet that thing plus uh, above plus 150, I'd say go for it. Anything lower than that, I'd probably just lay Oh, no. See, if I was going to do a 50% boost, I would take it all the way to Bell Bell to win and get my 430 up to six-something. I would take the opposite angle because I think Bell is going to be baller this week. Write that down. (laughs) Write that down. (laughs) Bell is going to be All right, let's talk matchups. You want to go right to the prop matchups, the parlay props? Caesar top 10s, Bell Hamlin minus 230. I don't like minus 230. They're both going to run top 10. But minus 230 for either two cars that have a bad pit stop, that scares me. I like Truex Hamlin. I think you have the same chance of a top 10 at minus 140. Same juice, same chance. Truex Bell at minus 140. Gibbs Hamlin at minus 130 is a joke. Because I, I, Man, come on. Give me something I can like. Mm-hmm. I like Gibbs Truex at plus 115. Kevin Harvick on his podcast was dropping some Larson numbers. Larson Truex, well to go, Professor. I know they came straight from you. Um, so, so on that thing, do you think um, Byron's now the best Hendrick driver? I think best is the, wrong, is the wrong statement. I don't think he's better than Kyle Larson. Um, I think that, that he currently has the hottest hand. And I can't. I don't know if that's him and Rudy Fugel. I don't know if it's the tire combination. I think it, I, you know. I don't like giving out awards like the best. Listen, Kyle Larson is too fast in everything he gets in to say someone's a better driver than him. Do I think that William Byron currently seems to consistently outperform Larson? I do, but I, I put those tier. I, now I do comfortably say they are the tier one Hendrick drivers. And Chase Elliott was on the Dale Jr. download, and he said a lot of the same things. He self-admittedly said this car doesn't fit something in his style. He didn't get into detail, but I can imagine I've seen some of his driver data. And I actually applaud that he said, I have finally said I have to change. 
If I can't get the car to me, I got to go to the car. I like that. I was concerned about Chase Elliott, but after him being on the down and being so open about changing his driving style, it actually warmed my heart for the Chase Elliott fans that he may be going through a transition, but I believe he has enough raw talent that he'll get to the other side of it. Hold on. Hold on. He won five times the first year of this new car. Correct, but that's when nobody set the car. The car is totally different. The car they're driving now is the same vehicle set up totally different than it did. Look how much faster they go. He won five times because they got to – he won five times in the best car. Now that everybody knows aerodynamically where to place the car and setup-wise where to place the car, what he's saying is – so follow me. Ready, Tims? Here's the deal. If you have a brand-new vehicle, the first year is a race to how to set the vehicle up. Then once the engineers get a hold of it and they tell you where the vehicle performs most optimally, then your driver has to drive it there. Like the roles reverse. And that's what Chase is saying. He knows how the car needs to be set up because William Byron and Kyle Larson are doing it. To answer your question, yes, Byron is the best driver there at Hendrick right now. No way. You're him hauling. You didn't want to answer the question. He, he's last, I don't agree. Last three years, he's been the first driver to two wins. He won six last year. Like, he's the best driver there right now. And consistently, he just stays around where Larson will get some wins, but then he has DNFs. Byron just stays right there. He's steady Eddie. So you're telling me, Russell, run head-to-head last year. That's the one I care about. I don't care about anything else. Run Byron against Larson last year head-to-head. Actually, run him head-to-head in the next-gen car, knowing that Larson has more DNFs. Yeah, what, okay. I, I've already done this for Kevin this week. Yeah, go ahead. What do you head-to-head, want? what's the record? <laughs> 78 races. Yep, 78 races. Byron's got 10 wins. Larson's got no, eight. No, no, no. That's not my question. Head-to-head. 78 races. Who finished in front of who in 78 races? Oh, that's a different question. <laughs> if I took the Byron over Larson matchup, we're gambling show. Don't give a shit about those stats. They're useless for me. I want to know it's a gambling show. If you took Larson, if Big Mouth Travis and I had a Larson-Byron head-to-head bet over 78 weeks, who would be up beers? It should be Byron with all the Larson Rex, but I'm questioning if it is. <laughs> oh, hey, you'll, oh, you'll cackle! The what's the de- what's the heads up matchups? Let me hear you it. Seventy eight races. Go ahead, sir. Okay, what? Well, everybody gets a everybody gets a guess. It's seventy eight races. First of all, can we say that number's correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Um, so that would be. 39 to 39 would be even just to set everybody with their math. I'm going to say Byron's up uh, seven races. Tim's? I think, I think Larson's up one. I think Kyle Larson has outrun William Byron 41 to 37. 39-39. Oh, wow. Wow. With 10, 10 wins, though, for Byron versus eight for Larson. I'll Agreed. This, but two extra let me make the statement, and you can't go back in time. If Larson doesn't wreck 19 freaking times, he has more than 10 wins, which you can't take that out. I agree. If some I mean, buzzer and nuts. How about this? If you're asking me, I would take either of them, first of all. But I like <laughs> in today's NASCAR. Great can take. No, listen to me. No, I'm going to tell you the story. In today's NASCAR, consistency doesn't pay. I'd rather win six races with 12 DNFs. Wins matter, bud. Wins. Firepower. Yeah, 10 over 8. Now, now in that same time period, Larson's finished second six times versus Byron three times. So if you really look at the, the dig into the numbers, Byron really only leads wins. Interesting. I, I stand corrected. He, he's a little better in average finish, but, you know, that goes into the DNFs. Steve, you might know what you're talking about with this NASCAR thing. Now, don't, the don't, counter don't to this that. is... Hold on. Now I'm going to jump on Travis's side. You know, Byron has years less experience, a couple less years of experience. I think Byron and – look, if you're, Hendrick, if you're Rick Hendrick, you're like, yeah, I got them both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when did Rudy Fugel come on board? Three years ago. Because I forget how many races they have and how many – I saw a stat. It was probably a Russell-provided stat, and it was just like – well, they won super early at Miami together. They had won together at KBM. They had, like, the, the, there's just a, 
I don't know. There's just a comfort. I mean, I understand it, right? Dale and I kind of had it. Um, I was a way better crew chief for Dale than I was for Jeff just because I was a little bit older, more mature, new, you know, just simply facts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think fuel. I like Rudy, man. He's no nonsense. You probably uh, made more money betting Byron than you have Larson heads up, though, because I, I remember last year Byron was always an underdog. Over Larson. <laughs> now, Tim, <laughs> that's why we like you, Now, Tim's. I agree with you, Tim. If it's 39-39, you want to take Byron because he's not getting the respect out of the books for those 78 yeah. races. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Uh, any other top 10 parlays? Tim, you got one you like. I like uh, Keselowski and Busher plus 175. Because I, I think I don't hate if, that. If because these two, well, when they, they run good, does. they both run good. They run bad, they both run bad. So mm -hmm. I actually really like what you're saying there. If they, yeah. If whatever they quote – Air quotes, you know, figure whatever they figure it out. If it works again this year, I like that bet. Yeah, a hundred percent. Why I like that. Yeah, and they were both top five at at Phoenix compared to one seventy minus one forty five individually. Yeah, I'd take the shot. I like the Truex Byron Larson triple header. Ooh, what's that? Of all tracks, this Plus is the two seventy five. Ooh. Truex Byron Larson. I like Hamlin Byron Larson. I like Bell Truex Byron. I like Hamlin Truex Byron. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones that like uh, hey, Larson listen, Truex. Tim's is good. Uh, can we get some more pencil uh, pencils <laughs> delivered to the DBC studio? We are, there's smoke coming off that notepad. A lot of plus money. A lot of plus money. I like it. That's the only way you're going to get. Look. Unless something crazy happens, they're all going to be jammed up front. Let's talk about the crazy. Drivers not completing 200 laps. So basically, this is very simple. You need a car to wreck or have a mechanical in the first 200 laps of the race. That's what we're looking for. When's the last time it's happened, Professor? Because it's been a while at Richmond. Well, it's, it's happened two of the four times in the next-gen car. Two of the four. Over is a plus 150. I love this bet. You know why I love this bet? Here's why. The same reason I hate betting the under. I'll do it, but I don't like it. Because I don't like to watch a game going, man, I hope nobody scores. Like, really? If I bet the under, I'm not watching. I can't, I can't watch. I'm not saying it's not a good bet. I'm just not going to watch. If you're going to watch the race, you aren't going, man, I hope nobody wrecks. Hope this thing just runs green the whole race. Like, you're hoping for some action. So I like the over. Plus, this is like a coin flip bet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like winning a bet. Like, if you haven't watched this, what, look at Tim's face when I tell this story, because this is Tim's in a nutshell. Tim's, there's nothing better than having a head-to-head -head against somebody and having them drop out of the race. Yep. Best feeling <laughs> ever. Because <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you know, because with the new rules, you know, you used to be able to come back and count laps. Not anymore. No. Nope. That baby is scored. He can't when come I back. I'm Same way with those not completing 200 laps. If a guy gets in a wreck, you know he's out of the race. Boy, you can flip, flip over to basketball, check your scores, because that baby is not changing. Before we move to Xfinity uh, Fantasy, who are some drivers that you should have in your, uh, your, your fantasy? Daily Fantasy is going to matter a lot. First of all, um, if Truex, Hamlin, Blaney, Byron, Larson, any of them win the poll, you have to have them because they're going to lead an absolute crap ton of laps. And when you talk about fast lap and tire fall off, the leader usually runs the fastest laps. The interesting thing about Richmond is you can sometimes cash a guy. So here's an interesting thing. Denny Hamlin tends to run long um, in these pit strategies, which makes him better for daily or for DFS because when he runs long, follow me here, Professor, right? Say he pits five laps after everybody else. When he comes out on new tires, he's going to be the fastest car every lap. So you're going to get a lot of fast lap points out of Denny Hamlin. I like him for that reason. Um, and then I think, you know, you can't get them all because they're going to be so expensive. So I think you need to look at Austin Dillon. He's probably going to be undervalued this week looking at the book. Um, Ty Gibbs is overvalued. I don't, you know, if, the, if Daily Fantasy has him as the fifth or sixth most expensive driver, I can't go on that. Spend your money on Truex. Um, I avoid Larson for the simple DNF conversation we just had in Daily Fantasy, even if he wins. You know, this is at a mile and a half. Sometimes you have to have him because he'll go out there and run, you know, 100 of the fastest laps of the race. I don't see that happening here, Professor. Would you buy that? Right. Like Larson is not as advantageous at this track for daily fantasy. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
Um, so who do I like when you're talking about value? You could throw a little bit of a risk on Barry. I don't know how he's going to run. I like Austin Dillon a little bit. Um, I think it's all going to come down to qualifying for a lot of those those like tier three guys. Like you have to have somebody that's going to pick up some some um, passing points. All right, let's fire. Let's move on to Xfinity because we got basketball to talk about. So I'm rolling this around. Anything else on NASCAR or Cup, or can we move along? Move along. Xfinity race. Chandler Smith, Allgaier, Custer, Almarola, Creed, The Dinger, Herbst, Love, Hill, Taylor Gray, Mayer. What says you, Professor? Uh, Chandler Smith won this race last year in a college car. Now he's in a Gibbs car. So I, you know that. So you don't think he's slowing down? I don't. I don't think that's going to be a, an issue. The only thing that stopped the Gibbs cars was it last year where they had that crazy pitch strategy where they tried to save a set of tires. They didn't have a crazy pitch strategy. They just totally, absolutely screwed it up. <laughs> let's hold on. Let's not sugarcoat this. Nice. Let's, let's not sugarcoat this. I was trying to be nice. Yep, I'm past nice. Um, I have to agree, Chandler so, Smith. I mean, so uh, okay, so I guess the interesting thing with the Xfinity race is Bubba Pollard. I wish they did top tens, right? Because at plus two seventy five, top five, I bet you could get Bubba Pollard at like you know even money or minus one eight or minus like one fifteen top ten, and I think that's a good bet. Bubba Pollard's an unbelievable short track talent. Um. So for those who don't know, driving the 88 car for Junior Motorsports this The, the week. struggle I have is, like, look, man, Xfinity cars are heavy and they're weird and they drive different. And, like, he's going to have to figure out who's he around. You know, I, I think he has the talent to run well. I just I don't know. If you're a big fan of short track racing, take Bubba Pollard, 275, top five. That would be a great day for him. Does he have the ability to do it? Absolutely. The guy's won a bazillion races of short tracks all around the country. But it is different. Right. How about basketball? Let's get to what we all want to talk about. <laughs> Let's just jump right in. Here's my slate. Uh, if you're not listening on Thursday, my apologies. Clemson over Arizona, taking the points. Love it. I I'm not in the basketball scene much, but last week I was told Clemson was a football school. They still are. <laughs> they still are. They, if they they ran up and down the court like they were a football like team running routes, but somehow they beat New Mexico and Baylor. Baylor was fake anyway, so they were going to hey, win Hey, Professor, game. what you just pointed out is if you're listening to this podcast, I want to be very, very clear that we do claim to be experts in the world of NASCAR stock car racing, but when we venture off NASCAR – we are no longer experts. We are gamblers. And that is totally different, um, totally different resume. Uh, so to your Clemson bet, we are going to be at odds then because I've got Arizona in the money line, Caleb Love over 18 and a half oh, points. Oh, money line, you can win. I have Kem's, Kem, Clemson with seven and a half points. Right. Arizona's going to beat them. Okay, perfect. So Arizona money line, Caleb Love, 18 and a half points, three and a half assists. The only reason I hate Clemson plus seven and a half is – if Clemson's within three, they're going to foul them, and Arizona's going to make the field. This whole fouling thing pisses me off at the end of these games. <laughs> Data analytics is ruining good sports. If, the, if you're down nine with 16 seconds left, pack it in. So Let, us, let us win the bet. <laughs> what else you got, Steve? North Carolina minus four over Alabama. You know who else is a football school? Bama. Bama. Moving on. I'm uh, um, I'm I'm thinking about going back to my Cormac Ryan three point bet, two and a half two and a half threes at plus one forty five. I mean I don't hate that. I could because I I see this game getting just crazy. I actually, let, while you keep talking, I'll find I actually have a UNC uh, Alabama parlay. I got to find it though. So, so he has good. so many bets, ladies and gentlemen. He has to dig in for the parlay that's still outstanding. I just want to put that out there. How about it, Tim's? Me and you are on this one together. Illinois, money line over Iowa State. Write it down. I love it. It's your classic best offense versus best defense, and you got to root for the offense, right? I don't want to sit there and watch a defensive battle. I want to see them going back and forth. So. Even the refs uh, like offense. Yeah, 100%. Whistle, whistle, whistle. Under right, 146 right. is going to hit, but I can't. I want to watch the game, so I can't bet the under. I have my, can't uh, do it. Here's yeah. my UNC bet. I've got R.J. Davis over two and a half threes. Mark Sears for Alabama over four and a half rebounds. And Aaron Estrada, five and a half assists. If you were listening to this podcast on Double Time, back it up and listen to that one again because, that <laughs> yep, it's that confusing. 
Um, I love Marquette over NC State. I mean, you, I you can't root against NC. St- DJ Burns is just like the best player out oh, there. Oh, right my now. wife loves him. Yeah. She he, loves a little candy coated big guy. And my man down in the paint, man, he's like a candy coated big guy. He, you want to talk about a football player? Oh, I yeah. love him. And he just did an interview with Barstool or somebody I listened to. Just like the guy's great. He's did got a couple you, vending machines. I'm like, this is my guy right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they asked him, what's in the vending machine? He said, uh, nothing that I'm allowed to eat. <laughs> so you, you know it's good right. food. You know it's good stuff. Yeah. Now, here is the, the bet that I don't know if it'll pay, but it's my favorite bet of the weekend. NC State Marquette over 150.5. Love it. That game is going to be close, and they are going to be slinging the rock. Like, there is going to be – that game is going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, the opposite of fun to watch, Purdue-Gonzaga – Throw it to the big man, two points. Throw it to the big man, two points. Boring, but successful. What do you think about Illinois, Iowa State over 146 and a half? You know, here's the problem. When you say Illinois, Iowa State, I just picture their football teams, and I'm like, they're not going to score 14 total. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I'm not sure about that one, but the one that the bet I think I'm going to fire. Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. for Illinois, over 21 and a half points. It's minus 110. I'm going to see if I can find a boost for that. The last six games, he's hit that mark. He's on a tear, so even if they get down, he's just going to keep shooting. So I think that mark's going to hit no matter what. Well, so here's the other one that that I think the Houston-Duke game is going to be an absolute burner to watch because it's going to be – it's going to be like street ball, man. It's going to be fast move. I don't understand the 134 total. Hammer. Am I am I missing something? Like, I mean, listen, the books obviously know what they're talking about, but am, am, am I that far off on what Duke and Houston have been doing in the tourney? I'm, I'm a little confused by it, too. I mean, you had Jared McCain hit eight threes in their last game that they played. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. They're respecting Houston's defense a little bit too much, but their offense is just as good. I mean, I mean, that's the point. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a hammer over. How about this? Just in possessions, we're not going to see a lot of single digits on the shot clock. No. Like this game's gonna move a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think we, I, I'm riding with you guys on that one. All right, I love it. Well, listen, uh, short track racing at Richmond for NASCAR, the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight for the NCAA basketball tournament. Uh, we got a lot of action in the air. It's gonna be a great weekend, opening weekend of baseball. Uh, we got only a few weeks away from the most beautiful thing in the world, the Masters tournament. We're gonna. I'll be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Can you bring us home some swag? Can yeah, I give you a come on. list? Yep. Send me your, uh, your order. All right. I love it. Well, it's another week. Uh, thanks for listening to Dirty Mo Dough. Get all your bets in, and may all your bets pay off.